let's do one more example. Let's maximize z equals 10x plus 12y, subject to the constraints x plus 2y, less than or equal to 150, x plus y, less than or equal to 100, and x greater than or equal to 0, y greater than or equal to 0. Some of you may be looking at this and going, oh, why is he doing this? Can't you just do that graphically like we did in Chapter 3? Well, certainly we can, but I'm going to try this one in the simplex method. You might find it instructive to go ahead and do it graphically and verify the answer. So the first thing I need to do is put everything into equalities. So I'm going to take my z equals 10x plus 12y, move the two terms on the right over to the left to get minus 10x minus 12y plus z equals 0. I need to convert my constraints with my slack variables. So x plus 2y less than or equal to 150 will become x plus 2y plus s1 equals 150. x plus y less than or equal to 100 will become x plus y plus s2 equals 100. And I still have my non-negativity constraints, but I've added on that s1 must be greater than or equal to 0 and s2 greater than or equal to 0 because these things ha cannot be negative if I want these things to be equal here. So we'll put it into my matrix. So the first row becomes 1, 2, 1, 0, 0, 1, 50. The second row becomes 1, 1, 0, 1, 0, 100. And the last row becomes negative 10, negative 12, 0, 0, 1, 0. Where we start, that's probably not my optimal solution because I see negative values in the indicator row. So I go to the most negative indicator, and that's going to be my pivot column. So I'll set this up here in front so you can see it a little bit better. There's my pivot column. Now to find my pivot, I need to form the ratios. So 150 over 2 gives me 75. 100 over 1 gives me 100. So that means my pivot is going to be the 2 because 75 is the smallest of my quotients. So in the next step, I need to change that pivot from being a 2 to a 1. So I'm going to go ahead and multiply 1 half times row 1, put the result in row 1, and when I multiply that top row by a half, it becomes a half, 1, a half, 0, 0, and 75. Once I've got the pivot to be a 1, now I need to put zeros down below it. So I'm going to need to take negative 1 times row 1, add it to row 2, 12 times row 1, and add it to row 3. So in the blue box here, you see that recipe. When I carry out those steps, I get zeros below the pivot. My second row becomes 1 half, 0, negative 1 half, 1, 0, 25. And there's probably a groan that goes through the room now because I still have a negative value in my indicators. So that's going to be my pivot column in the next step. So quickly checking my indicators, I had 75 over a half. That gives me 150. 25 over a half is 50. So when I form those quotients, I can see that the half right here is going to be my pivot. So to change that pivot to being a 1, I'm going to need to take 2 times row 2, put the result in row 2. When I do that, you'll see that row 2 becomes 1, 0, negative 1, 2, 0, and 50. Now I need to go ahead and put zeros above and below that. So I'm going to have to take negative a half times row 2, add it to row 1, and 4 times row 2, add that to row 3. So I've listed those steps out here. When I go ahead and work those out, you'll see that I get zeros above and below, just like I was supposed to. The first row becomes 0, 1, 1, negative 1, 0, and 50. And the last row is going to be 0, 0, 2, 8, 1, 
and 1100. All of my indicators are now positive, so I've arrived at the optimal solution now. So that all that remains is to figure out what is my actual solution. Well, S1 and S2 are my non-basic variables. Those are the ones that I'm going to set equal to zero. When I do that, I'm left with y is 50, x is 50, and z is 1100. So the solution is S1 equals zero, S2 equals zero, x equals 50, y equals 50, and z equals 1100. Normally when you report the solution on your homework, you won't have to tell me what S1 and S2 are because those are, are not part of the original problem. Remember the original problem was a maximize Z problem. That's 1100. And also it asks for the X's and the Y's. Those are 50 and 50. S1 and S2 were slack variables that we just use in this problem to help us get to the answer.